Hi, and welcome back to another AP Calculus video. Today we're going to talk about one last method for estimating the area under a curve. So, so far we started out this unit talking about um, rectangular approximation methods, otherwise called as Riemann sums. Um, we talked about LRAM, RAM, MRAM, which are right, left, and midpoint uh, ways to evaluate rectangles. And those just discussed where do we put the top of the rectangle. And we discovered that those approximations can sometimes, well, can usually either over or underestimate the, uh, the actual value. Then we went on and we talked about how to find the actual value. So how to evaluate this integral. And we know how to evaluate this integral here on the screen. Um, we can find the antiderivative and use that fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which says we take the antiderivative and just evaluate the antiderivative at the uh, limits of integration and subtract those two numbers. So we can use our calculator to find this. We have lots of methods to estimate or to find the exact area for this particular curve. But we're going to talk about one last way to approximate the area under a curve. And on the AP exam, you are most often asked to use this uh, approximation method along with LRAM, RRAM, or MRAM when you're given a table of numbers. Because if you don't have an equation to find the antiderivative for, how do you approximate the area? So we're going to talk today about using trapezoids. So rather than taking this function, and if we draw a kind of a picture of the graph here, so this is x squared, um, and when I draw, there's my equation, go from 1 to 2, 1 to 2, we're finding this area. Now, if we're finding this area using rectangles, we would need to know if we're using the midpoint, the left, or the right. But suppose that we want to take something like this, and if we divide it into little sub-intervals, so um, let's use a black pen for that. So I'm going to divide it in half, so this is like 1.5. And then I'll divide it again, I'll, I'll make four little sub-intervals. So if I divide them evenly, now I'm in the quarters, right? So 1, 1.25, 1 1.5, 1 1.75, and then two. So here are my, my four little sub-intervals. And if I draw rectangles, I'm gonna really, I'm gonna have a lot of extra space at the top, right? If I do like RAM. And if I do LRAM, I'm gonna have, you know, a lot of extra space. So like here's LRAM, whoops, that was a very fat, there we go. Here's LRAM in gold. And I mean, look at how much space I'm leaving out. Like this whole chunk right above the rectangle gets left out. So I don't like LRAM. And RAM is too much. So RAM looks like this. And I could do MRAM, but you know, RAM's too much. It's overestimating. I could do MRAM, but MRAM frankly annoys me uh, because then I'd have to like go and find uh, halfway between 1 and 1.25 which isn't too bad, it's 1.125, but it just kind of gets a little silly, right? So let's avoid rectangles and let's talk about a different shape. Let's talk about trapezoids, because I think a trapezoid is gonna be a better way to estimate our um, area here. And actually, let me draw better trapezoids, because it's hard to see what's happening. I'm gonna zoom in just a smidge. But if we draw trapezoids, what happens is, they're a little overestimating because my curve is kind of concave up so it's dipping below and really what I'm doing is I'm connecting the two endpoints and it goes above so it's going to be a little bit of an overestimate but look how nice and tight those trapezoids hug that curve and I think a trapezoid is going to get even closer than MRAM because this would be MRAM so MRAM I think would still um, MRAM would underestimate because we are concave up. So MRAM, you have more here uh, than here. So you end up, you know, being under underestimate, I believe that's how that works. Um, let me get rid of some of this here. Uh, but the idea is now we have uh, this ability to draw these nice trapezoids that kind of hug our curve and they're nice and Man, it's almost like a nice smooth curve, okay? So today we're gonna to talk about using those trapezoids. And as we use our trapezoids, let's understand that the shape of the trapezoid, the, uh, the area formula requires you to know a height 
and then base 1 plus base 2. Well, we've kind of seen this before. On day 1, I talked a little bit about this trapezoid method, and I said we're going to talk more about it later. Well, now is later. B1 and B2, these are the Ys. H is the width. It's the delta X, which here, in this particular example, this blue line down here, this is delta X. And from 1 to 1.25, here delta X is 0.25. And then your Y values are going to be what we get when we evaluate. So here for this smallest trapezoid, my Y value would be this golden line. I would have to evaluate f of 1.25. That's not too bad. So f of 1.25, that's just going to be, you know, 1.25 squared, which is 1.5625. And so to find this trapezoid, I would also need to know f of 1. So this would be b1. This would be B2. So B1 and B2 are the Y values on either side. So it's like we have these trapezoids, but they're, instead of being like, you know, we're used to seeing trapezoids that look like this, <clears throat> but we have a right trapezoid now that's been upended. Okay? So the bases are actually going like this, and the height is where the, we feel like the base should be. So another way to think about this is delta X and then Y2 plus Y1. Um, that would be another way to notate this. So as I'm working this out, let's kind of zoom out, and I just realized I did not uh, draw this accurately. This should be down at zero, this parabola. So if we kind of fix this. There we go. That's a little better. <laughs> at least now it's mathematically accurate, so we can avoid the comments from the peanut gallery. There we go. So f of 1.25, we need f of 1, well that's just 1, so this first trapezoid would be 1 half, delta x is 0.25, b1 is 1, b2 is 1.5625, and we'd crunch that out. And then the next trapezoid, we would have to know um, f of 1.5. Well, 1.5 squared, that's easy enough. 2.25. Okay, so we do 1 half. The width is still 0.25. And then the B1 for the next trapezoid here, so I'll highlight in purple is the previous B2, so it's still that 1.5625. So that's nice, we don't have to reuse it. 1.5625 plus 2.25. So this is my purple trapezoid. So now let's do this yellow, let's do a yellow trapezoid. So it's gonna be 1 half, 0.25, 2.25 is B1, and now I need to find B2. I need to do F of 1.75. So that's 1.75 squared. 3.0625. And then my last trapezoid is this blue trapezoid. So it's going to be 1 half, 0.25. That's my change and then 3.0625 plus f of 2 is just 4 and then what I need to do is crunch all this out so oftentimes you'll find that uh, when you have these trapezoids a lot of times they'll be really nice numbers or they'll be the numbers from a data table um, not numbers like this uh, here I would expect you to use a some sort of a scientific calculator um, these decimals are a little bit more than uh, what the AP exam would ask you to crunch out in your head. Not that you wouldn't be able to add these numbers and multiply these out, it would just be too time consuming um, and not worthwhile. So 
use a little calculator when it gets, you know, like this. But here's what we get with our trapezoid approximation when we uh, crunch these out and add them together. Um, we end up with 2.34375. The actual value is 2.3 repeating. You could evaluate that by hand or with your calculator. So we're not too far off. It's not a bad approximation. And it is an overestimate, and an overestimate, and it has to do with the concavity. So because our curve was concave up, um, this is over. It's an overestimate. And we'll kind of sum that up at the end. But this is how we use trapezoids. Uh, we, you know, plug things in and we evaluate it using the trapezoid equation. So let's take a look here at um, some tabular data here. So this is a tabular problem, tabular meaning in a table. And uh, most of the time when we do our, um, our trapezoid rules, we're given a table and we have to evaluate the area and the integral using a table. Here we have a function, uh, r of x, giving the rate at which water is flowing through a tube at a specific times. We're going to use trapezoids to estimate the amount of water that passed through the tube during the first hour, and we're going to include units. So this is a pretty typical um, type of problem to come, come up on the AP exam. You're given a rate in gallons per hour. You're asked to estimate the amount of water, and you have to understand that you're being asked to evaluate this integral. So during the first hour, we're given gallons per hour. So the first thing I'm going to notice here is that we do have a problem <laughs> with some units. So I'm going to have to do some unit conversions here, and I can either um, I can either treat this as over the first hour and go from zero to one, and I can make these all fractions, um, or I can change my rate of gallons per hour to gallons per minute. I feel like it would be easier to change our minutes to hours. So I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to say 0 hours, 0.25, um, 20 is one third of an hour, 0.5, and then uh, 45 would be 0.75, and then this would be one hour. So I'm going to change those to hours. So this way our rates are agreeing. We always want to check, or sorry, our units are agreeing. We always want to check and make sure we have proper units. So essentially, the integral that I'm asked to evaluate is going to look like this. We're going to go from 0 to 1, r of t dt. This is what we're estimating using trapezoids. Another really common question on the AP exam is to write but not, not evaluate an integral. They want, to show, they want you to show that you understand the connection of finding the area using trapezoids with integral notation. So this is the integral we're trying to solve here. We're going to use trapezoids to do it. So here on my graph, I included the data points just as a visual. But I would say that moving forward, after seeing this done one time, you do not need to do the graph. But on the graph, here's kind of what it's going to look like. I have all these data points right here. So 0, 10, 0, 25. Uh, we've got... Oh, and look, 0.25, look, I, I even made it, uh, made it kind of line up here. So there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, and there's another one. So here are my trapezoids. I'm just literally going to connect them. So these would be drawing the trapezoids in. So I have one, two, three, four, five trapezoids that I am going to need to find the area of and add together. So let's go ahead and start with trapezoid one. Now the distance between, um, or the height for trapezoid one is the length along the x-axis. So here the delta x is 0.25. So for trapezoid number one, I'm going to do one half, 0.25, and then base one and base two are the two y values. So this 10 and 25, I can just pull it from the table. So again, I don't even need the, um, I don't even need, you know, anything in terms of uh, using the graph. The graph is just there as a visual guide to help us understand what's happening. So 10 and 25 are B1 and B2, so I'm going to write down 10 plus 25. So that's trapezoid 1. Now I'm going to add to it trapezoid 2. Plus, trapezoid 2, the change in X goes from 0.25 to 1 third. So up here, this delta x was 0.25. Now, from the table, all I have to do is subtract. 
And so um, one third to 0.25, really I should be using fractions. Um, I want to be as precise as possible. So to go from one fourth to one third, I'm going to subtract one third minus one fourth. So what is that? Four twelfths minus three twelfths. That's one twelfth. So that's the time change there. So here where I'm writing my trapezoid, it's going to be one half. My delta x is one twelfth of an hour. Okay, five minutes, right? Or no, uh, yeah, five minutes. Yep. And then b1 and b2 are going to be these two. It's going to be 25 and 15. So you're, you're going to be using the same number in the next trapezoid. So we use 25 here. It's going to be the first base. 25 plus 15. So now trapezoid number three, one half. Okay. Trapezoid number three is going to be between these two here in purple. So now I'm going from 20 to 30 minutes. That's 10 out of 60 minutes. It's going to be one sixth. I could also do uh, the same fraction. So from 10, so one half minus um, one third is the same as three sixths minus two sixths so that's what another way I can get one sixth the same way that I did with the twelfth so I don't know that it would ever be this complex on a real problem it could be so how about if I write the right number one sixth and then uh, the bases would be 15 and 7 so again if you're purple here so the delta x is the change in the x and then you are using these two y values. So here the change in x was that 1 12th, and then these are the y values. The change in x was 0.25, and then these are the y values. So those the y values are the bases, and then this is the delta x, or the height of the trapezoid. So keep on going, 1 half. So this next one, let's see, let's pick a different color. Let's do green. The change here is 0.25. Oh, thank goodness, a nice easy number. 0 0.25. 0 0.25. And then the two bases are 7 and 20. And then one more trapezoid to go, 1 half. And then the change here is 0.25 again. We'll use pink. 0.25. And then the two bases are 20 and 12. Now, <laughs> on your test, you should probably use your calculator and crunch all this out. On your AP exam, this is good enough. You could actually stop here. Provided that all of the numbers that you're adding and multiplying are numbers and not expressions, like you could never use f of 30 or r of 30. Um, you'll see on answer keys for free responses that that is an acceptable way to show the setup. But usually with the trapezoid method, uh, when we're using this trapezoid approximation, you get a point for showing the setup and understanding that you're finding trapezoids and setting it up correctly. And so sometimes people will use the function notation within that setup, and then they will go and plug the numbers in separately in an additional step. This is really nice because it buttons it up into one, one nice little step that includes both the credit for setting it up and uh, identifying the trapezoid parts, and then two, because you don't have to simplify your numerical expressions, this actually counts as your numerical answer. But in reality, you want to make it easy on your grader and you also want to make it easy on your teacher. So go ahead and plug those numbers in and tell me what the actual answer is. Here, what we should get is 15.25. And so that's my numerical answer. And I want to make sure that I include units. We just integrated a rate of change that was gallons per hour. Um, so our result here when we evaluate an integral, remember the process of evaluating an integral is using these trapezoids. So when our, we get our answer, we should be measuring gallons. So this is how many gallons have flowed into uh, this tank or flowed through this tube, I guess. It's not into a tank. So over the first hour, 15.25 gallons flowed through this. Uh, this tube. So I guess that's not very fast, but anyway, um, that is what's happening. That's how we interpret this answer. 
So again, when you evaluate an integral, you've got a couple different ways to do this. You've got rectangles and Riemann sums, which are the same thing. Really, they're the same thing. So you've got a Riemann sum, left, right, RAM, LRAM, MRAM. You've got um, the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which involves antiderivatives. And then you also have this new method called the trapezoid approximation, which is more like your LRAM, RAM, MRAM. Um, it's just another way to estimate the area under a curve it's by creating these trapezoids. So all of these processes are finding areas under curves. All of these processes are evaluating integrals. They're all trying to find the same thing. They're just different methods for doing it. And your AP exam will ask you to do different methods. And if they want you to use MRAM, RAM, LRAM, or the trapezoid method, they will say, use this method. Other than that, they would expect you to evaluate using a calculator, if it's a calculator active question, or using antiderivatives, if it is a non-calculator question. So keep in mind, as you guys uh, pro progress through this, this is kind of the final lesson here in uh, this fifth unit about the definite integral. Um, coming up in unit six, we're going to talk about something called the indefinite integral, which the indefinite integral is essentially an integral that does not have any limits of uh, integration. So instead of finding an area under the curve, we're going to focus more on finding the antiderivative. So uh, hopefully this has been a helpful video. Keep practicing. The more you do, the better you're going to get at this stuff. Uh, you can do this, so keep going. You've got this.